I uh, continue to uh, trust and support our uh, national security agencies and uh, officials, uh, and when they uh, highlight that there are concerns around a particular issue, uh, I trust them and I believe them. The Prime Minister faced questions again today about the Jaspal Atwal controversy. Justin Trudeau continues to back claims from a top government official that rogue element sabotaged his India trip last week. Today, the Conservatives tried and failed to force that official to testify and to explain that theory. Opposition MPs want to know how it could be true when a BC Liberal MP has already taken responsibility, sole responsibility, for inviting a would-be assassin to a PM event. Could both narratives be true, and if so, how could this have all happened in the first place? And joining me now is the former director of the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, Ward Ellicott. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Let's go back through this story of the invitation that was given by a, a, an MP to a Jasper Atwal to go to this, uh, this reception in India, and then the story from a senior government official saying, yeah, it was really kind of the Indian government that set this all up. What, what should people take, what do you take away from that? Uh, to, say the, to say the least, it's confusing. It's puzzling that a Canadian member of parliament would not know who Asp uh, Atwal was, uh, and would invite him to a, to an affair with the Prime Minister. Um, uh, it's hard to understand how the Indians could have set that up. Um, it's not impossible, I suppose, that uh, RAW, the uh, the intelligence Indian intelligence service, could have had could have that they didn't have some role. It's not impossible, uh, but it's hard to see how you would how that how you would make that work. It sounds pretty complicated. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm wondering, what, what is it? It is, it is, it is interesting that the Indians pulled at walls. Um, that, that was where I was going to ask you next. Well, it, it, the, the fact that they took at wall off their blacklist, uh, entry list into India, is odd. Uh, although it does suggest that there, there are a couple of possibilities. Well, One is that they had either turned him uh, and were using him for information purposes, or they wanted to see where he would go. I wonder too if, uh, if just to leave that for a moment, um, when, when I asked about the National Security Advisor coming out and telling a story about the Indian, that was unusual to me. What, what did you make of using the government or the fact that this person came out to brief reporters off the record and, and gave that particular story? Um, presumably, he he hoped that if he did it off the record, the story wouldn't come out. But it is, if if you in fact knew of an Indian operation to embarrass the Prime Minister, if that's in fact what happened, although it does sound a bit of a stretch, it's hard for me to believe that you would actually say that to the press, either on or off the record. Uh, you think he was pressured to do so? Of information. If, that is, if it is true, it is very sensitive information, and I am, it would seem to me that the only reason for doing that would have been considerable political pressure to do it. Okay. Unless he simply misspoke himself and well, had to say something else. And that's I wanted to come back with, with the, the possibility that Mr. Atwal was in some way engaged with Indian intelligence. Was, was, is it possible that was the message that was trying to be conveyed to reporters as opposed to this was a setup, which is how people interpreted it? I, it's hard to see what that gets the Indians. Um, uh, that sounds improbable. That, that they they wanted to send the message that they were engaged with that well uh, it's possible that they wanted to embarrass the prime minister it does sound a bit of a stretch um, it, it's also possible to think of other things that could have happened that could have led to the situation like what well the reality I mean, the, the Indians clearly do have some concerns about about still uh, extremism in Canada, Sikh extremism in Canada. They clearly are, they clearly have some concerns. They presumably have a concern for some reason. Uh, perhaps they uh, they have been investigating. Would be beyond the Indians to to if they felt that we were not doing enough about Sikh extremism at this point in time to do something themselves. In your experience... Which explain their involvement with Atwal and interest in Mr. Atwal. So in your experiences, heading, heading CSIS, did, what was the relationship like? Were the Indians, did they express those kinds of concerns then? And, and is that why you think that... Well, I, they, think, I think like a lot of intelligence services, but the Indians in particular, they did confront a, a considerable problem with Sikh extremism, extremism for a long time. Uh, if the Indians had felt that we were not doing enough on Sikh extremism, I have no doubt that they would have begun to see what they could do themselves on their own hook, uh, even if they were to try and do it in Canada. It, the service, it's a, 
it's a it's a good service. Uh, it's a professional service, but it's also a service that advances Indian interests, and that's its purpose. To what extent do you think this will have an impact on that relationship, the information sharing, the, the operability or interoperability of CSIS and, and, and the Indians? Is it something to have a lasting impact? Because a lot of people keep saying, this isn't really a story, but clearly a lot of people think it is. Uh, it would seem to me that if, if the story is actually true and that actually happened, to have watched it in public is probably not wise, um, or to have exposed the fact that Canada was aware that that was a that that, that in fact was going on probably also not wise. Um, it, it's hard to it's hard to see what what the Indians would get out of doing any of that. Right. And I, but I, I'm interested in the credibility factor here. This is what I'm trying to ask you in a roundabout way. Okay. Do you have some some concern that the credibility of either CSIS and the RCMP has been hurt, or the, uh, the credibility of, of the, the government bureaucrat who, who was put out here to, to, to tell the story? I don't think it. I don't. From the point of view of the service or the RCMP, I don't know what their involvement was. It depends on whether they were involved in vetting or not vetting. Or I don't know whether they were asked to vet the list. It has happened in the past, and that they might have been. Uh, it's not hard to understand why they would have missed Atwal's name. It's a long time ago. People have forgotten what the, that that uh, probably have forgotten his role. Uh, in terms of in terms of a relationship with. Uh, in, in terms of, of uh, Daniel Jean, uh, who was the individual, I guess, who, who provided the information. Um, I, yeah, I'm surprised that Daniel would provide that information either off or on camera, um, or on or off the record. Uh, I, I, it does surprise me. Okay. Uh, but it, uh, the credibility question, is that, is that something that would concern you? No. No, not particularly. I, it, is, it is interesting information. I, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to know without knowing precisely what he said and having the opportunity to ask him whether he in fact had misspoke himself and meant to say something else. Uh, uh, it's hard to know what he was trying to convey, but certainly the message that one has heard is, is hard to credit. Right. Last question for you, is almost where we began. We have the MP Sarai, who's taken full responsibility, has resigned as a caucus chair for the Pacific Caucus of the Liberals, and yet we have this other story that the, the Prime Minister, during question period for the course of this week, has defended that there was this involvement by the Indian intelligence or some sector of it. Can you, you're puzzled by it, but you know, what should Canadians take away from that? Canadians can only take away from it that, that there was something, I mean, did, for this to have gone on as long as it does suggest that there was something, however less than credible it sounds, that there was something going on. Um, that seems to me ultimately potentially damaging to our relationship with the Indians, and clearly it is something that one would want to go away to be resolved as soon as one could resolve it. Would you expect the Conservatives are trying to call this individual to committee? Would you expect the government I'm to... I'm not sure that that will be of much assistance because the reality is the information, if it is indeed true, is probably so sensitive that he's not going to be able to provide any of it anyway to a parliamentary committee. Uh, so it's probably not going to be resolved by a parliamentary committee, which in many ways is, is political theatre right. rather than, than, than reality anyway. Okay, Ward Alcock, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so nice much. Nice to see you. Thank you. All right, after I spoke with Ward Elcock, the Public Safety and National Security, Security Committee did vote down a possible appearance by the senior government official.